Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale Horizon coach from Rapido Trains. My model is decorated for Amtrak in the Phase 3 paint scheme. The model has an MSRP of $119.95. I got mine for $99.98 from Factory Direct Hobbies. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside, there is an instruction sheet with prototype and operational information on one side and exploded view drawings on the other. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the car. A layer of clear film gives some additional protection against scratches. There is a parts bag included with some additional details and another with a long shank coupler if you want to use the car on curves sharper than 24 inches. Rapido also includes a magnetic wand to control the car's lighting. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. According to the information included in the instruction sheet, Amtrak Horizon cars were built by Bombardier and entered service in 1989. The design was based on earlier Comet cars built by Pullman Standard. The cars come in two types, coach and dinette. Amtrak ordered a total of 104 cars, 86 of those coaches. These cars were used in the Chicago area, and a few Horizon cars were used for a time on California's Capitol Corridor before they were replaced by double-deck California cars in the 1990s. Many remain in service today. I compared the model to photos I found of real Phase 3 Horizon coaches and it appears to be a very close match. Looking at photos, it appears that a few of these cars retained their Phase 3 paint into the mid-2000s. Rapido offers this model in several paint scheme variations, including different versions of the Phase 3 scheme with slightly different stripe widths. They also make the dinette version of the car. The paint on the car is opaque. The silver has a slightly grainy look when viewed under certain lighting conditions. This would probably be less evident with some light weathering. The separation lines between the silver and black around the steps is slightly fuzzy, though this isn't too noticeable without magnification. The stripes are sharp and the markings are crisp. Most of the tiny writing is legible with magnification, except for some microscopic labels in the blue stripe below the windows. My car has a paint flaw in one of the side doors. The paint is slightly crackled and some of it is filled in between the grab iron and the door. This seems out of character with the overall quality of the model. I'm taking 5 points. Just like the prototype, these cars have clean lines, so detail on the sides is minimal. The door grab irons are separately applied. Some are very close to the doors, which is probably what caused the paint issue on my car. One of the step well covers on my car is crooked, so I'm taking 5 points. On the ends, the car has sprung diaphragms. These don't extend very far beyond the car body, so when two Rapido Horizon cars are coupled together, the diaphragms don't touch. According to the instructions, the car has medium length couplers that will allow it to negotiate a 24 inch radius curve. It might be possible to install short shank couplers to close the gap up between the cars, though this would likely require broader curves. The car has working marker lights. I really like the open vestibule ends with safety gates. Lower down, the ends of the car have uncoupling levers, separately applied end grabs, and HEP connectors. On top, the corrugated roof matches prototype photos. While the rest of the car is fairly plain, underneath the car has a ton of plumbing and other detail. I really like how many of the plumbing details on the underside are molded in a flexible plastic. That should help them to be more durable when the car is handled. The disc brake detail is neat, although on my car one of the plastic brake shoes is loose and spinning. While I think it's cool that Rapido put this much effort into the underside, the brake detail is almost impossible to see when the car is on the rails. I'm not sure if it's really worth it if it has the potential to cause operational issues. I don't have a long enough run right now to test the car and see if this will be a problem in an actual train, but new models shouldn't have broken parts, so I'm taking 5 points. All of the car's wheels pick up current for lighting. The model is equipped with brown painted knuckle couplers on both ends. Looking for a match on the horizontal center line, the coupler on one end is slightly low, so I'm taking 5 points. The coupler on the other end is even lower. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. Unfortunately, the car is wobbly, so I'm taking 5 points. The instructions mention that the bolster screws may need to be tightened as part of the tune-up process. The car weighs 7.5 ounces. The NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length is 6.75 ounces. A little extra weight should help the car to track better. The car has some rolling resistance. Given that modern passenger train lengths tend to be relatively short compared to freights, it's probably not bad enough to cause problems. It's possible the cars will loosen up a little over time with some running. The car has magnetic switches hidden in the roof that control the lighting. The included wand can be used to turn the lights on and off. 
Unlike some other Rapido cars that have onboard batteries, this car uses track power. According to the instructions, it will work on DC or DCC. I'm testing it on DCC. Wave the wand near the center of the car to toggle the interior lighting. Waving the wand about two inches from the end of the car turns on the markers on that end. I really like it that Rapido made each end work independently. Unfortunately, the car doesn't seem to remember how it was set up last after the track power is off. It does appear to have a capacitor circuit which keeps the lights on for a few seconds after losing power. That should reduce or eliminate flickering. The instructions warn about not giving the car more than 15 volts. Most DC and DCC systems for HO run at about 12 to 14 volts, but it's still something to be aware of. The wand system is maybe not quite as versatile as having a function-only DCC decoder, but it has the advantage of also working on DC. Setting up the markers is normally something that you'd do once when the train is made up anyway, so being able to toggle that feature while the train is moving really isn't all that useful. Since the instructions mention tightening the bolster screws to cure wobbling, I'll tackle that first. Ideally, a model should have a three-point suspension. This is accomplished by tightening one truck so that it can only pivot but not rock side to side. The other truck should be left looser so that the car can negotiate on even track. The instructions say to tighten or loosen the bolster screws as needed to keep the car from wobbling. Hmm. The screw on this end is already as tight as it'll go. I'll try the other end. Same thing. I can't tighten it anymore. The car still wobbles. I'm going to remove one of the screws to see if I can figure out what's going on. It looks like the metal post that goes through the hole in the truck is a little too long. It acts like a stop to keep the screw from getting any tighter. Normally I just remove the truck and file it down, but on this car, because of the wires, the trucks don't come off easily. I'll have to try something else. This is Northwest Short Line Part 116-4, a 4mm by 7mm O10 thickness bronze washer. It looks like it'll fit over the metal post. The washer will hopefully allow the screw to clamp down tighter on the truck. If you can't find one of these, any small washer that will fit should work. That feels pretty good. The truck can pivot, but I don't feel any side-to-side -side rocking. I only need this on one end. The other truck should be allowed to rock. Success! Now the car stops moving as soon as the wheels settle onto the track. I prefer KD couplers on all my cars, so I'm going to swap out the factory couplers while I work on the coupler height problem. Removing the coupler screw frees the draft gear box and coupler assembly. The draft gear box lid pops off. Inside I was a little surprised to find an oil slick. Rapido's couplers on their SW1200 model that I reviewed previously were oily too, so maybe this is something they're doing now. I wish they would stop. I'll be using KD whisker couplers, so I won't need the coupler spring. Oh look, more oil. After cleaning out the draft gear box, the KD drops right in. Unfortunately, with the lid on, the fit is too tight to allow the coupler to swing freely. Instead, I'll use a KD draft gear box with the lip around the edge filed off for clearance. Now the coupler works as it should. I'll install the KD coupler box with the original coupler screw. Unfortunately, the couplers on both ends are still low. When the trip pin pops up on top of the trip pin height gauge, though, the coupler is closer to right. That gives me an idea. This is a small scrap of O10 styrene that I've cut to size and glued to the bottom of the lid of the draft gear box. After putting the draft gear box back together, it's good to check to make sure that the coupler still swings freely. If the coupler needs a lubricant, I'd recommend KD Greasem, which is powdered graphite. It works great and it won't leak and make an oily mess. After adding shims to both ends, the coupler on one end is perfect. The other is still slightly low. I'm going to file the coupler mounting pad on the car. After some trial and error, this coupler now looks right. The loose brake detail has a bulge on one side that corresponds to a bulge of the inner part of the disc brake, perhaps representing the brake caliper. It looks like it should engage somehow, but I can't get it to stay still for long. There is also an open end. Since this part is all but invisible when the car is on the rails, I'm simply going to remove it by pushing on the open end to pop it off the axle. The parts bag has a pair of details that look like they might represent HEP cables. There are no instructions, but the exploded view drawing shows them attaching somewhere in this area. I don't see a good way to mount them, and they look like something that would be prone to falling off, so I'm going to leave them in the bag for now. If you want to remove the shell to access the interior, perhaps to add passenger figures, you'll need to remove four screws that hold the coach together. Two are relatively easy to spot on one end. On the other end, the screws are partly concealed by the truck. The instructions say to spread the sides of the car to disengage the clips in the middle. I found it was difficult to get the separation process started. After a while, I was able to gently separate the body from the underframe. The seats look like they should be able to accommodate passenger figures. I like how they're painted in a two-tone scheme. A pair of contact studs on one end, K 
carry power to the light board that's mounted in the top of the car. If you have a car that doesn't light up, try squeezing the shell onto the underframe a little tighter. When putting the car back together, watch the pieces that extend down on either side of the step wells. I had to pry mine out a little bit to get them to engage the grooves on the sides of the step well cover. The car should snap back together relatively easily. Just a side note, but the instructions say that the disassembly procedure for the Dinette cars is a little different. I like this car in spite of its shortcomings, though it bothers me that Rapido is now explicitly leaving things like curing body wobble to the customer. To me that seems like they're saying, rather than improving our quality control, we're just going to tell people it's their problem to fix stuff. Having said that, these cars are light years beyond the old Walters Horizon cars, which as far as I'm aware are the only other HO scale Horizon cars available when ready to run plastic. I don't regret that I bought several of these and I'd feel okay about buying them again. Let's see what we've got. My car had a paint flaw, a crooked step well cover, and one of the disc brakes was falling apart, so I took 15 points in the paint and detail category. The car had two low couplers and it wobbled, so I took 15 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total of 70 out of 100 possible points, which would be a C- minus on a report card. I have another coach that had the same coupler and wobble issues, but didn't have any paint flaws or step well problems, and the brakes weren't coming apart, so its score would be 85. I'm giving the review car a yellow signal because of the score, but I still think it's a nice model overall and far superior to any previous HO scale models of Horizon cars. Overall, I think Rapido did a pretty nice job on this car. If you need one or more for your Amtrak trains, then I think you might like it.